will happen. As within the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, وَمَكَرُوا وَمَكَرَ اللَّهُ اللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ Right, this is in Surah Al-Imran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, okay, they plan and we plan, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners. Over here, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to tell us is that His order or His command or His decision is upon all of the orders and affairs. And the people, they do not know a lot of things, right? So like many people, they might have been, you know, planning to do various types of things, but some other, you know, uh, events happen which make it very unlikely for them to actually go into their own plan. Like for example, when we talk about the COVID pandemic, right? A lot of people were planning many things in those months of January and February of 2020. But then right when the month of March came, the whole world went into a lockdown. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to tell us. That, وَاللَّهُ غَالِبٌ عَلَىٰ أَمْرِ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُ That the people don't know. And this is actually on record that, you know, at that time, the president, he said this, that there is this invisible enemy. This is what he called the COVID pandemic, that it's an invisible enemy, it's going everywhere here and there. So this is just to explain and elaborate on this on this portion of this verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted, that's why he sent the COVID pandemic. So after this, the next portion is where I actually recited in Salat al-Maghrib, where Yusuf is there, he's helping out, he's working in this house, and one day the Aziz is not at home, and so, what happens is, is that the wife of the Aziz, and her name is recorded as Zuleikha, she had a vicious plan. Now before I talk about the vicious plan, let's talk a little bit about Yusuf a.s. Now, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had actually blessed Yusuf a.s. by giving him 50% of all the beauty of this world to him. Now imagine the whole other 50% that includes you and I, right? So me and you were all in that other 50%. We have all the other people who are beautiful men, women, this, that, whatever. So they come in that 50%. And the other 50%, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to Yusuf. Imagine how handsome he would be. Imagine, you know, like when he would be walking, like he would have a positive stature. He would be walking, you know, with a, with a very different way. So that is Yusuf a.s. Right? I mean, inshallah ta'ala, once we get to Jannah of Firdaus, it would be amazing to have, you know, like a podcast with Yusuf a.s. Just to ask him, you know, how would you feel when you'd be walking in the streets, this, that, right? Because whenever somebody would see him, he would be like, wow, who is this guy? Right? That is the persona of Yusuf a.s. So obviously, if the men are being, you know, they're acting like that, that they're, they're in this awe, imagine what the women would be going through in that sense. So, Zulaikha, the wife of the Aziz, she had made this plan that she would basically going to do some, you know, haram things with Yusuf alayhi salam because her husband was away. So she locked all the, all the doors of her house and she told Yusuf alayhi salam, come to me. And Yusuf alayhi salam, he said, that I seek refuge and basically I don't want to do this type of thing. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is my Rabb and He is the best person who can, the best being and the best God who can actually save me from this. And so in the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that, وَلَقَدَ هَمَّتْ بِهِ وَهَمَّتْ بِهَا لَوْلَا أَرْعَى بُرْحَانَ رَبِّ That Zulaykh had already fallen for Yusuf alayhi salam, but Yusuf alayhi salam did not respond to her, whatever she wanted to do, because Yusuf alayhi salam had seen the ayat, He had seen the proofs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا الْمُخْرَسِينَ Because he had seen the proofs, so that is why he stopped away and he said, no, I will not commit this type of thing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that Yusuf alayhi salam, he is one of our, uh, what you would call, sincere slaves. إِنَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا الْمُخْرَسِينَ Right? That he has actually also chosen Yusuf a.s. Now, what happens is, is that Yusuf a.s. He turns away, he starts running away from uh, the Aziz's wife. And so she actually grabs his shirt and it rips a little bit, like it rips a bit from the back portion of it. 
Now as soon as this specific scene happens, the Aziz, the husband of Suleyha, he comes back home. And once he opens the door, he's shocked. What's, what's going on? Why is his wife after Yusuf? And why is Yusuf like, like this in this uh, portion over here? And so immediately, Zuleikha, she flips the plot around. And she says that, قَالَتْ مَا جَزَاءُ مَنْ أَرَادَ بِأَهْلِكَ سُوءًا إِلَّا أَنْ يُسْجَنَهُ عَذَابٌ عَلِيمٌ She says that to her husband, oh my husband, what should be the punishment for someone who is trying to do an evil deed with your wife, right? Except that he should be imprisoned or he should have some type of humiliation punishment or something like that. Right? Or, or an adab, a torment. And so suddenly the Aziz is totally confused. He's like, what's going on over here? Why would Yusuf even do this? And so, right over there, there was actually one other person and he said, that he was a person who was a witness. And he said, it's very simple. If, if Zulayha is you know, telling the truth, we let's check his shirt. If his shirt is ripped from the front, then that means Zulayha is right. And Yusuf is lying, but if the shirt is ripped from the back, then that means Zulaykha is lying and Yusuf is true. Then in the Quran it mentions, that when they saw his shirt, it was actually from behind where the ribs were. And at that moment in time, the Aziz, he said that, you know, you are a Kaidakun, that basically you are someone who has plotted this whole thing through and through. And so after that, he told Yusuf السلام, that, you know, Yusuf, you know, just ignore this, like, you know, pretty much forgive whatever, this and that. And he told his wife that, was so that you should seek repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what you have done. Now, obviously, this incident happened, right? But here's the other thing. A lot of people, they love to spread rumors. And the most weird way to spread rumors is how? Is how the women, they talk to each other and they say, oh, don't tell the other person, but I'm telling you this. Now that other person, he tells the other person, don't tell them that I'm telling you, or don't tell them this happened, but you know, this actually happened. This is the most weirdest way and the most fastest way. You know, this is proven through history that everybody is just telling each and everybody and the whole town gets to know about what happened. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says that وَقَالَ نِسْوَةٌ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ مُرَأَةُ الْعَزِيزِ تُرَاوِدُ فَتَاهَا عَنْ نَفْسِهِ قَدَ شَغَفَا حُبَّةً That within the town, a lot of the women, they got to know that uh, Zulaykha is, you know, she's like fawned by Yusuf alayhi salam, which is actually her slave. And so everybody is curious of what is so, you know, tempting, what is like so cool about this young slave boy. And so they want to find out, right? Uh, we we're seeing her in error in that sense. So what Zulaykha does is she invites, you know, some of the noble women of the town to her house. And she gives each of them one knife, right? And Yusuf salam is told within this palace to prepare a basket or tray of fruits. Now she tells Yusuf come in and he comes in into this room as the door is open and he's bringing the tray of fruits. Again he's a slave so he's just coming, he's doing the job, whatever he's told to do. The moment these women, they see Yusuf come in, they have the knife in their hands. And immediately in awe, they're in awe and awestruck of this moment, they just start to cut off their fingers, right? And they're not even feeling pain, they're just looking at him and they say, what are they saying at this moment in time? That that this is an angel, that he is not a bashar, he is not a human being, he is actually an angel. And they cut their fingers right over there. And obviously at this time Yusuf salam, he also feels embarrassed and in, in the next few ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that he says that قَالَ رَبِّ السِّجْنُ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا يَدْعُونَنِي إِلَيْهِ That for me, he's telling to his Aziz, that for me, the prison is much more better instead of what, you know, Zulaykha is inviting me to do all these kind of things because it doesn't befit a person of upright character, a person who is modest, a person who is of that prophetic nature to basically go through these types of events, right? And this is also something which we find in the character of the various prophets. Even the Prophet 
they would never do you know immoral acts or you know these types of actions. It is not within their nature. It is not in their fitrah to do this type of thing. Similarly, Musa alayhi salam, when Musa alayhi salam left Egypt and he went towards Madian and he saw that two women are over there was, uh, waiting in line to get their animals uh, the water, he went up to them very politely and his gaze down and he asked the same thing, what are you doing? Because obviously for a prophet of Allah, they always want to protect the other people in society, especially when it comes to women and children and those people who are of the uh, lower, what you would call, authority in that sense. So, what happens over here is that Yusuf is then sent to the prison, and when he goes to the prison, he meets two other young people, right? When he goes over there, he sees two young men. The first one, he says, that I saw that I'm squeezing the grapes to produce the wine that the king drinks. And then, that the other second one, he sees that from his head he has a basket of bread, and the pigeons or the birds are coming and they're eating the bread from his uh, head, and he wants to know the inter interpretation of this dream. And so, and they, and they, both of these two, they say that inna naraka min al that we see you, O Yusuf السلام, as one of the people who do ihsan, who is a muhsin. Now, a person who is a muhsin, he is that person who would do good to you, whether it is, you know, there, you're going through bad times or good times. A muhsin is actually someone who is always there, right? As, as we say in, in English, that, you know, a friend in need, right, is a friend indeed. Like when you help someone in their time of need, then you really get to know who are the real people, who are the real helpers. So Yusuf السلام, he was addressed as being a muhsin. And so he tells them look, that, okay, I will tell you your interpretation of your dream, and you know, just give me some time and this and that. And a couple of days later, what he does is Yusuf السلام, thinks that, you know what, I'm in, this, in, I'm in the prison, Right, and I have these two young with, young men with me. So why shouldn't I talk about the oneness of Allah? Talk about Tawheed? Talk about giving da'wah? And so that is why Yusuf Alayhi he took this opportunity and he told the two uh, the the sahib of his prisoners, the companions of his prison of his prison, that Ya sahib yasijni arbabum mutafarriqun khairun amin lahu wahid al qahar that, oh my companions of the, of the prison, do you think that if there are more than one God, right, if there are different types of gods, is that better or greater than Allah who is Wahid and Qahar, Allah who is one and who is also Qahar, that He has various types of power, He, is, he has His authority over everything. And so the, the, the people in the, in the prison, they get, they get to know about this and they say, no, you know, obviously Allah is, is one, they get to know a little bit about that. And then Yusuf السلام, he tells the interpretation of, the, of their dreams. He tells them that for the person who was squeezing the wine, he will be released free and he will go back to doing his job as, he's, as he is supposed to do. And as for the second one, he will actually be executed and he will go through that path. Now, what happens is, is naturally, again, when you're in a prison and you, you pretty much don't know when you'll get out, the person who's getting out, you always try to tell them that, hey, can you at least check on my case, you know, see what's going on, you know, probably maybe ask the, ask the judge or someone just to, you know, maybe like speed up my case or do something. And so this is, that is exactly what Yusuf السلام, he told this person, who was a, the person to squeeze the grapes for wine, he told him that, hey, once you get out, you know, just try to make sure that you talk to the judge and see where my case is. Now here's what happens. When he gets out, he forgot, right? Because he's not in contact with Yusuf السلام, anymore. So he forgot, he's busy squeezing the grapes and serving the wine to the king. At this moment in time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sends down Jibreel alayhi salam to Yusuf alayhi salam. And Jibreel alayhi salam asks Yusuf alayhi salam, He asks him, Ya Yusuf, who was it who saved you from your brothers? 
Who was it? And again, Yusuf the response that he's giving is Allah, Allah, Allah. And Yusuf is being questioned, and Jibir says, Who was the one who saved you from the well? He says, Allah. He was the one who, he says, Who was the one when you came to Egypt? He basically granted you a place of accommodation. He says, Allah. He says, Who was the one who saved you from the evil plans of the white man? He says, Allah. So then Jibreel and at this moment in time, Yusuf is crying. Literally, his, you know, his beard is wet at this time. And Jibreel says that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will also free you from this prison. So basically, repent towards Allah and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He is the one who will get, get you out of here. And at this moment in time, Yusuf he remembers and he understands his kind of like mistake, but again it's human nature that you want to try to get your case sped up, but he understands what is happening over here. And he prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be uh, released from the jail. Now this is a very emotional aspect. You know why? Because when we are stuck in life, right? And this is this whole young lens aspect of this specific story. That when we are stuck in our lives at a certain point, at a certain point in time, we're trying our best to maybe you know just talk to the people, right? Like if someone has is in a good company and we're probably looking for a different job, we always tell them, hey, can you like you know recommend me for this position or do something this and that. But the essence of that whole trial, the essence of that whole tribulation, is that a lot. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us that hey my slave, are you really my slave? Do you really talk to me? Do you really talk to Allah? Do you really talk to the one who has power over all these things? That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying for us to understand in that specific moment in time. I'm sure each and every one of us, we have been through various types of trials and tribulations and various types of of you know hard things in life where when you think about it you're like I didn't even know what to do right and this is the main quality of even the prophets and also the sahaba that they really did this whenever they were facing calamity what would they do they would always try their best to pray two rak'ah of salat of uh, basically they would pray two rak'ah nafil salat al hajjah and they would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that ya Allah I don't have anything else to do, please help me, right? Now obviously the best time to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the tahajjud time, right? When he's in coming down to the first heaven and asking the people that, you know, if there's anything you want to ask, ask me if you're seeking for forgiveness, I will give it to you, right? But even if someone is not able to do that, at least if you are praying salatul hajjah after any type of full salah, then inshallah ta'ala, obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will listen to the dua. Now, what happens is, in the, the next portion of the story, is that the person who was squeezing the grapes, so the king, he saw the dream, right? As we famously know that it's seven lean cows, seven fat cows, seven nice ears of crop of the corn, and seven like that, uh, ears of the corn. And so the king is confused, right? He doesn't know what's going on. So he says that, you know, is there anyone, you know? Uh, that if there is anyone, please tell me what's happening, what's going on over here, yeah, of this dream. And so this person, who is the per, like the wine, the personal wine guy, you know, of the king, he says, "Hey, I know one person. He's in jail. Yusuf Ali He can tell us the um, interpretation of the dream in no time." So they say, "Okay, go, go to Yusuf. Go towards the jail. So he goes towards the jail. And now Yusuf Ali is like, "Okay, now." Now you, you know, you remember me because there is a, of the, the time of the interpretation of the dream. And again, it's human nature, right? Like, um, generally speaking, what happens uh, in, in, uh, over here in America is that, you know, what they say is, if you need anything, call me. So if you don't need anything, you don't call me. So that's exactly what's happening, right? They, so the, the wine guy, he didn't need you, so that's why he forgot about his case. He didn't even mention it to the judge. So he didn't call him in that sense. So now anyway, Yusuf he gets to know 
and he tells him that obviously in the next seven years there's going to be a good time, right? Uh, that the famine will be a lot, and you know, basically there there will also be a lot of rain, so it will be better to store those crops. And then after that, there will be seven years where there will be no rain, and it will be an extreme famine, and you need to prepare for that very, very carefully. Now he goes back to the king. And the king listens to everything. He says, Yusuf wa ayyuh siddiq wa aftina fi sabri bakaratin. And the whole verse goes on. And then the king says, you know, let's call this guy Yusuf, right? Let's basically get him out of jail. Let's end his case. What's going on? Now at this moment in time, Yusuf alayhi salam says that I'm not going to come out. He's like, what are you talking about? Why don't you want to come out of jail? And the reason why Yusuf alayhi salam did, want, did not want to just come out of jail like that is because he wanted to come out with a clean slate, right? With a zero crime criminal record, right? As many of us are aware, if you apply for any job anywhere, they always have to do a background check to check, you know, what type of a person are you? So Yusuf Ali Salam wanted to have a clean background. So that's why he said, I'm not gonna come out. He said, tell the Aziz to ask about the incident about the women. So he, he starts to ask and he gets to know and he actually asks the wife of the Aziz and she says that you know that's like the other portion and then she says that that basically Zulaykha is trying to say that basically the truth comes out today that actually I was the one who wanted to do those bad things with him and all this kind of thing and I was the one who also invited the other women with the knives and everything so I was the one who plotted and planned for all of that so then the Aziz says okay we'll drop the charges like there's nothing going to be now like you know there's no case so let's just prove him he's innocent so let's get him out as soon as Yusuf Ali Salam comes out the king asks him you know what do you want to do um, in terms of my calendar or something and immediately Yusuf Ali Salam he says that right he says that I want to become the finance minister, right? So it would be like the department of, of, the, of the treasury of the United States. So that would be, you know, something that he'll be doing. So he is a, he is a part of the department of the treasury for the Egyptian uh, government and ruling. So Yusuf Ali Salam is given the task and he immediately begins to start planning and forecasting for the next seven years. And he also starts immediately forecasting and also planning for the years of the famine, right? Now obviously, Yusuf Salam is very busy now in Egypt. He's, you know, he went through a lot. He went through the life with the Aziz in his house. He went through the incident with you know, Zulaykha. He also went through the incident of the jail and also helping out the two people. And now he's, he's finally reached that position of being at this uh, governmental position within the government of the Aziz. And it's a very key position, right? Because if Yusuf Ali Salam does not do proper financial planning in this sense, then obviously all of Egypt would have lost all of his crops, right? So that is why this position that was given to Yusuf Ali Salam was given with a lot of trust being given upon him. And so in the next few verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is talking more about how things are also happening back in uh, the place where Yaqub Ali Salam is, right? Now over there, the story begins when the famine begins. So seven years of good, of you know, good crops and rain and cultivation has happened. Now the famine begins, and now the real test begins. And this is also where the brothers, the seven brothers of Yusuf salam, they are also concerned and worried that where are we going to get our food? Where are we going to get the crops? Where are we going to basically going to get the corn and you know the bread and all this kind of thing? Because we need to survive, right? So it's kind of similar to how we had the COVID pandemic. A lot of people lost their jobs. A lot of people, um, you know, they did not know what's going to happen. A lot of people were dying. So it was like a very crucial moment in human history and also for as a historical place for us. Because now one person actually asked this question. It was a young person and he said, why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send pandemics? Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send these types of famines and, you know, this type of thing? Like right now, if you're following the news in Hawaii, there are a lot of like fires happening. It's like totally crazy right now. So, so the question is that you know this world is not that perfect um, utopian world, right? 
this world and has been made as a test. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it again and again. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created death and life to check us, to test us who has the best deeds. And that is why these things happen, right? I mean, what would this world be if there were no famines or if there were no these types of events occurring? Obviously everything is going smooth, okay, that's good. But that is what Jannah is for. Otherwise it defeats the purpose of Jannah. And so, inshallah ta'ala, I think we'll probably be stopping here for tonight at this portion right where Yaqub is advising his sons and telling them to get ready to go towards Egypt to check him because the news started to spread that there's a new king in Egypt, right? And he has a lot of crops, he has a lot of uh, produce so he can help out. So that is where the idea came from to, to Yaqub that let me send my kids to Egypt so that they can probably get some food. So inshallah ta'ala we'll end here for tonight inshallah ta'ala and we'll continue some other time and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to continue. I sincerely ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow all of us to be able to understand the story, to gain the benefit of whatever has been said. If anything that I have said is good, it is actually truly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if anything, if I've erred or mistaken or something has gone bad, it is actually from the evilness of my soul. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow all of us to be able to take these lessons from the story of Yusuf and apply it in our lives and also to that we teach it to our kids so that they are also well aware about this. So Allah wa ta'ala الأحياء من هو الميتين برحمتك يا رحمة الرحمين وصلى الله وصلى على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه